Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is an example problem for shear stresses, deflections, margins of safety, and strains for a beam. A very common type of problem we might experience would be having a floor beam in an aircraft. In order to make it even more simple, let's say we have a floor beam-like structure that's actually a cantilever beam like this. Let's say we have a beam that's uh, about, oh, let's say it's about 20 inches long. And let's say it's about 10 inches deep. This is a common size, although it typically be longer, we'll probably have caps top and bottom that are riveted to our skin. We'll have a vertical stiffener that's riveted to the upper and lower cap and along the skin. And usually there will be an angle along here where whatever it attaches to. Let's say we have a, oh, let's say a thousand pound load on the beam. Let's say that our thickness of the skin is something like 0. Uh, let's just say it's 0. 0.10. Usually our thicknesses will be less than that, but we'll run into uh, that thickness as well. We'll uh, ignore the cap areas altogether for this problem. So in order to evaluate, let's say we need to evaluate, uh, so this is what we're given here, and let's say we have a, uh, a material that has, uh, let's say it has FTU equals about, uh, well actually we're not going to need that, so let's start with FSU. Let's say that our FSU is say 37 KSI. And let's say that our modulus is 10.5 MSI, million PSI, and that our G, our shear modulus, is about 4.0 MSI. We've got our thickness, We've got our uh, dimensions of the beam, we've got our load, and now we're asked a few things. Let's say we're asked to find, first, the shear stress in the beam, Fs. Well, we know that shear stress is just P over A. If we take a cross-section through this beam, like this, the beam will look something like this, but we're actually ignoring the way the cap looks. We're just looking at this web here. And, uh, and if we look at this, we see, well, the cross-sectional area then, it's actually like a rectangular piece. It's 0.1 inches thick, and it is 10 inches tall. Therefore, no matter where we take a section cut across this thing, no matter where we take a section cut, this is going to be our section. That means we're going to have a force, since our shear stress is P over A, we can see this force is going to be parallel to that cross-section that we see here. We're just going to have 1,000 PSI divided by the area of that, which is 0.1 times 10. And that is going to give us a shear stress of 1,000 PSI. So if that were our first answer, we'd say 1.000 KSI. We could also just call it out as a PSI, and we would box that answer. Okay? If we want the margin of safety, all that is is the allowable, in this case FSU, divided by that calculated stress. That means we're looking at 37 KSI divided by 1 KSI minus 1, and that's a huge whopping 36.0, that just means it's not critical. A lot of times in industry, we just say that is high. Okay? You would say, okay, but in this class, I'm going to want you to give me precise numbers. So you would box your answer there. Now let's see next, we're looking for the uh, shear strain. Okay? So our section part, let's say that was part A. Part B is the shear strain. Well, that's simple because we know from Hooke's Law that uh, the shear stress equals, and we can actually write that as Fs, equals our strain times our modulus, G, right? Our shear modulus. Therefore, we can say that the strain is just the shear stress divided by G 
That is just 1,000 PSI. Oops, too many zeros. Divided by our 4 million inch-pounds. And we would find out that our shear strain is point zero 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 two five inches per inch. Got it? Okay. And we would box that puppy. All right. Now let's say we want uh, the deflection. How much? What is the lateral shear deflection? So actually, we're going to later learn that when we have a loading like this, we're going to get a little bit of a bending deflection like this. We're not ready for that yet. All we've learned about is shear deflections, which means this thing just uh, moves as a rigid element, just like we were looking at in class when we looked at that shear element. So that deflection, it'll be the same there as it is down here, we can see that that deflection, remember that angle, if I redraw this, if this is our beam and it moves down by this, this is the deflection, this is the length, and remember our shear strain is defined as that angle. Assuming small deflections, we're going to pretend that we have a small deflection. That means our deflection, part C, is simply our length times our shear strain, right? Actually, it would be you know, you do your trig, but for small angles, the tangent of that angle is going to be the angle. Therefore, our deflection is just L and the shear strain, which is just 20 inches times 0 0.000250. Now, in industry, a lot of times we'll neglect this. This will be so much smaller for longer beams than the bending deflection that we'll neglect it altogether. But in our case, we're just learned about shear deflection and shear stresses. That's all we know how to do, and so we're going to learn how to apply this now. So that means our total deflection would be 0 0.005 inches. So our deflection is 0 0.00500 inches. Always need units and appropriate sig figs for something that starts with a non-zero. We're going to show three sig figs in our answer. Uh, that's how you do it. If I asked you what is the running load or the shear flow in that beam, we know that the stress, looking again at this cross section here, if we draw this cross section, we've got a stress like this. That means the shear flow. Remember the shear stress is just the shear flow over the thickness. Therefore, the shear stress times the thickness, so N, the running load would just be that shear stress times the thickness 0.1. So 1,000 times 0.1. So the shear flow, we can call it Q equals 100.0 pounds per inch. What else? I think that's everything we need to understand about that kind of problem. So in this particular case, we looked at a beam. We could look at little rubber grommets or anything that we see if we have a loading that's perpendicular, that's, we can take a cross section and see that the shear stress is causing a deflection. Often that deflection will be negligible. Sometimes it's not. We ought to be able to calculate it. That's how you do it. Enjoy.